All right, 4.1, increasing and decreasing functions. A function is increasing on an interval, a, b, if the second point uh, substituted into the function is greater than the first point substituted in a function whenever x2 is greater than x1. That means that as x increases, moving from left to right, the values of the y also increase. Now, if the function is increasing, what sign would the tangent slopes be? And that's something that you have to think about. If I have an increasing function, well, the slopes of those tangents would definitely be positive. So this is an important item to note. Let's keep moving forwards. A function is decreasing on an interval a, b if f at x2 is less than f at x1 whenever x2 is greater than x1. So what that means is that as x increases, moving from left to right, the y values also or, sorry, they don't also, but they decrease. So as x increases, the y values decrease. So if the function is decreasing, what sign would the tangent slopes be? And now you think about it, the function is decreasing, you know that the tangent slopes are going to be negative. Knowing this, Let's look at example number one. Without graphing, find the intervals of increase and decrease for the function f at x is equal to 5 over 4 x to the power of 4 minus 10 x squared. What do we need to do without graphing? The key here is without graphing, we need to be able to find out whether this uh, what, the areas where it's increasing and the areas where it's decreasing. To do this, we need to set the first derivative equal to zero. When we do this, what we can do is find the points, or possible points, where there is a change in direction. When there's a change in direction, this will help us determine the uh, uh, point areas where we could find the increase and decreasing areas. So, set the derivative equal to zero, find the derivative factor, find the zeros of the first derivative, and it turns out to be negative two, zero, and two. And what we need to do is test these values, test these intervals, with these uh, values in mind. So we go from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 0, 0 to 2, and 2 to infinity. We use a point to test it at, and we, find, uh, we test it in the first derivative. So we pick a point, and we find out the values of increasing and decreasing. What that means is that over here, we have areas of, over here, we have areas of decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and increasing again. So let's state all the intervals. f at x is increasing when x is between 0 and negative 2 and when x is greater than 2 f at x is decreasing when x is less than negative 2 and x is between 0 and 2. So that's when the derivative, it's increasing when the derivatives are positive and decreasing when the derivative, the first derivative test is negative. This is known as the first derivative test. Example number two, find the x and y intercepts using the information from example one and sketch the function. So 
f at x of 5 over 4 x to the power 4 minus 10x squared. What we do is we set the first derivative equal to 0, and sorry, we set the function equal to 0. We common factor, we find the roots. These are the three roots. We also have the points that we originally had where there's either some sort of max or min, so these are the points where the first derivative is equal to 0, and we use this information to graph it. Now when we look at a graph that looks something like this, we're going to f look at it and graph these. What's going to happen in this unit is we're going to have to find some more important points. We're going to be finding points somewhere, for example, over here, where the ch and there's something called the change in concavity. We'll be looking at this in this unit. Another point that's going to be important is somewhere in this area. There is also a point here where the change in concavity will happen. All right, next one. Example number three. For each function, state which intervals need to be tested for determining increasing or decreasing. Here is the first derivative of the first one, first derivative of the second one, first derivative of the third one, and finally the first derivative of the last one. Something to note. Oops, sorry about that. Let's go backwards just quickly. So, now, noting this, I want you to note what I give you. I don't give you the second derivative. I don't give you the original function. I give you the first derivative. So if you're given the first derivative, you need to determine the areas of increasing and decreasing. That means you factor what you're given right there. If I gave you the, uh, the original function f at x, you would have to find the first derivative, which then you would have to find uh, uh, the information of uh, factoring, setting it equal to zero the whole bit. In these questions, all we're doing is setting this answer equal to zero and finding the values of x. So it set the derivative equal to zero, you common factor, and it turns out that you have to test the intervals from negative infinity to 1 and from 1 to infinity. For part b, we set the derivative equal to 0, and then you plug in the values, again, too fast a little bit, and what you find out is once you factor it, that your intervals are going to include all possible points from negative infinity to positive infinity. In part C, it's already factored. We are testing all the points, but including where it's undefined. So in part C, we're testing both the, the values in the numerator, as we see here, and we're also going to test the point at where it's undefined. The reason why you want to test that is that changing and increasing to decreasing can happen when there is a vertical asymptote, so we need to include those values as well. And finally, the last one, the interval is going to be, we're going to test uh, from the numerator, negative 3, and also from the denominator, negative 2, positive 2, and again, positive 3. So we're going to test all of those intervals to get it. How do we test the intervals? Remember that we set the first derivative equal to zero, and you'll also have to test any vertical asymptote because it can change from increasing to decreasing across an asymptote. So an asymptote is part of an important set or important part of the intervals. We will find in this unit that we will be changing the intervals quite frequently and increasing the intervals that we're going to test. So our interval chart is inevitably going to get larger. Alright, that's the end of 4.1 folks. See you in 4.2.